And those Houthi attacks in the Red Sea are also disrupting manufacturing here in Europe. Electric car maker Tesla said it will suspend production at its biggest European factory, and more companies may soon be forced to do the same. Production shelved. U.S. automaker Tesla plans to halt production at its facility outside Berlin for about two weeks, saying in a statement the components couldn't make it in time to its factory due to disrupted Red Sea cargo routes. Many of the materials Tesla uses in its car production are shipped out of China, a supply line currently under strain. Since December, major shipping companies, including Germany's Hapag Lloyd, began traveling the longer and more costly route around the Cape of Good Hope, which takes container ships an additional two weeks and oil tankers one more week than traveling via the Suez Canal. The prolonged delivery times are now threatening companies' supply chains. Back in December, Swedish furniture house IKEA had warned of possible disruptions, but industry analysts expect other companies could also run into trouble if the Red Sea route isn't cleared soon. My colleague Stephen Beardsley from DW Business is here in the studio with me for more on this. Right Hi, Stephen. Um, so we've seen car makers react. I presume that they're not the only businesses that are that are feeling this. No, we mentioned Tesla in that report, but of course Volvo has also said that it's going to suspend production as well. And no, they're not going to be the only manufacturers. I mean, there is a massive amount of global trade that comes through the Suez Canal. And for Europe, that's even higher than the global average. So these are products that are shipped from Asia to Europe. They could be toys, they could be car components, especially for electric vehicles. A great portion of components for EVs come from Asia and they use this canal. Um, and of course it could be oil and fuel. So all these things together mean that Europe especially is looking at this. And while we're only hearing from these two car makers right now, I imagine every car maker and many other companies are taking a look at their backup supply chain plans and saying, what do we do if this thing is prolonged? We know that container prices have been rising. We know that the containers that have been shipped through the Red Sea uh, are falling, the numbers are falling. So um, the question is, if you're, as your guest suggested, if this is going to be a prolonged thing, if the Houthis are not going to be deterred right away, then how long is this gonna last? And this is something that we were not hoping to see after COVID so soon where, to be sure, things were much worse then, prices were even higher, and the disruption was much more severe. But this is another supply shock that Europe didn't want. And I'm curious about firms' reaction to these strikes uh, from the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, targeting the Houthis that they say are going to help, uh, you know, target them to prevent this from, uh, from jamming up the Red Sea and, uh, and the ability to stymie supply chains. Do you think that these strikes are going to make matters worse for companies, or is it going to put minds at ease that the U.S. and the U.K. are, are doing something about this? I think it's anyone's guess. What we know is that Maersk, one of the major shippers in the world, Danish company, their CEO came out and said, hey, great, something's happening here. Maybe that'll be a positive thing. But again, back to your guest, as he just said, we don't know how this is going to evolve. And if there's going to continue to be trouble, um, then that is also a problem. Now, maybe the attacks in the Red Sea stop, or maybe their ability to do that is somehow deterred. The bigger question is, what does this uncertainty in that region mean? Markets in general are very uneasy about what's been going on since, the, the, since that attack on October 7th and the response from Israel. So this is one more element that's adding to insecurity and businesses don't like insecurity. There is this direct shipping problem, but on top of that, you're also going to see um, money put away if people aren't really sure that now is the time to invest, if there could be a wider conflict in the Middle East, for example, and then all these questions of oil prices. We saw oil jump 4% today based on some of these jitters. We saw that on the other side of the Gulf Peninsula, in the Gulf of Oman, Iran seizing an oil tanker there. So all of this coming together is adding to these jitters that were already there. And it affects markets, it affects investments, and this is something that the world didn't want right now, but it is another reason why companies are re-evaluating their supply chains and saying, gosh, you know, how reliant are we on everything over there and what is our backup plan when that falls through? It started with COVID and we see it continuing to happen. Stephen, thank you so much for breaking that down for us. Uh, that's Stephen Beardsley from DW Business. Thanks, Claire.